Hey guys. C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life doing a live stream, how to type famous people. And uh, I haven't been around much recently, I'll admit it, but uh, that's, why, that's what happens during like every holiday season. I don't know if anyone remembers um, last year around this time, I actually just straight up disappeared. I, I completely disappeared. Um, and uh, that's what happens when, you know, juggling the whole single father thing and, and whatnot. But uh, uh, I did have my children and uh, it's just been really difficult to be a dad and get content out at the same time. Hence why all the rescheduling. And in fact, last night there was a uh, very large snowstorm that came in through and uh, there's snow all over the place. And that inhibited uh, some additional plans and schedules and things that were handled. And as a result, um, I am exhausted and uh, got a really bad headache. Uh, but I'm here uh, many hours late and actually a day and many hours late, but uh, I am here. So sorry about that. And uh, thank you all for your patience. I am not Superman. And uh, we're... Uh, running a, a skeleton crew uh, here at uh, CSJ right now um, uh, because of uh, recent challenges, but uh, we are definitely moving forward uh, regardless. So uh, anyway, uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, with that being said, uh, wow, Martin Luther King Jr., huh? <laughs> Apparently someone's already decided to put in the super chats tonight, so thank you, uh, Mr. Introverted Feeler, for that. Uh, but yes, I am alive, and yes, I am hydrated. Thank you for asking. I have uh, the big uh, 64 ounce uh, water bottle jug to um, go with it uh, from there. So, all right, cool. I have no idea who NBA Youngboy is. Remember, folks, uh, the format for tonight is Super Chats are accepted, but there needs to be some kind of video on YouTube uh, to watch the person to appropriately type them, as is required. Uh, and uh, while Super Chats uh, are open uh, right now, uh, they will be closed uh, later. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's bring this up here. And, uh, cool. Oops. There we go. Open. Awesome. And, uh, let's get the next thing out of the way as well. Okay. Apparently I'm incapable of chroma right now. There we go. Awesome. And let's see what everyone can see. That sounds pretty good to go right there. And then we will move this over right here and then that one here and this one over here cool great bit of a slow start but that's what happens when you're exhausted right um so one second <clears throat> so yeah, let's get down to it. All right, so I added a few, add this to Tyler, the medium, okay? And then Martin Luther King Jr., awesome. Um, cool, let's get down to it. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, interview. And let me know if you folks can hear uh, this pretty well. Uh, need to hear. Uh, let's see what it is here. Let me know if you guys can hear this, all right? Three, civil rights, King, Van Oker, roll 20, sound 36.
Dr. King, this church is as good a place as any to go back over your commitment to the civil rights movement. When you went out from here into university and then you went to Montgomery, Alabama and started the bus boycotts there, what was the philosophy uh, for the Negro people of our country? Uh, of course, uh, that particular struggle and that philosophy centered on breaking down all of the barriers of legal segregation. So I would say that in that period, uh, the basic thrust for the gaining of citizenship rights for Negroes... Like, I mean, this guy sounds like direct, direct AF. <laughs> Dr. MLK Jr. Awesome. Yeah. Direct. I mean, if you keep, like, that's pretty obvious. He's direct, so let's keep going. Uh, was to end uh, the humiliation surrounding the whole system of legal segregation. Dr. King, was there something peculiar <clears throat> to the place where you started and the kind of people you attracted? I mean by that, there was a strong attachment on the part of your parishioners in Montgomery to the church. They were older people, weren't they? Yes, I would say by and large they were older people who uh, participated in the boycott because they were the ones using the bus, bus more than anybody else. And uh... I would imagine that's the case because that's who the people, I mean, they're obviously the people using the bus. Uh, so, you know, and because I'm talking about what other people are doing, I'm obviously S-E-N-I while being direct and, you know, I am T-I-F-E, L-O-L, -L, logic, you know, so... Seems pretty responding to me as well. Yeah, very responding. Yep, definitely looking like a direct responding movement. T I F E S C N I, which means we're looking at ISTP or INFJ for Dr. Martin Luther King so far. Let's keep going. Uh, Montgomery was a community predominantly church senate, uh, so that uh, it was very easy to get to the vast majority of Negroes because they were in some way connected with a church in the community. Was there, in addition to your commitment to the idea of nonviolence, wasn't it also the only thing you could do, the white community having the monopoly on violence, that if you had tried violence, they would have met it with violence? It was the only device open to you, wasn't it? Well, I put, put it another way that uh, <clears throat> morally, I was led to nonviolence because I felt that it was the best moral way to deal with morally. I was led to nonviolence because I felt it was the best way. L O L. Because I need to sound like a Baptist preacher, even though I am a Baptist preacher, right? Fair enough. Uh, definitely affiliative. That's pretty affiliative if I've ever heard an affiliative statement, you know. <clears throat> the problem, we were seeking to establish a just society. And uh, it was my feeling then and it is my feeling now that uh, violence is certainly much more uh, socially destructive and it creates many more social problems than it solves. So I... Ooh, social problems, then it solves. More affiliative statements. Yay, two more affiliative. Yay. Let's keep going. I was led to nonviolence for deep moral reasons. Now, there is no doubt about the fact that in our struggle in Montgomery and all over the United States, for that matter, Nonviolence is also practically sound. Uh, it would just be impractical for the Negro to turn to violence. He has neither the instruments nor the techniques of violence. We are about 10 or 11 percent of the total population of the nation, and I would say we are about one tenth or one percent of the firepower. So it would just be totally impractical and unwise and unrealistic 
for the Negro to think of violence. Well, I saw this in the beginning in uh, Montgomery, but this wasn't the basic reason that I uh, turned to nonviolence and that I believed in it as a philosophy. I turned to it because I felt that it was the morally excellent way to deal with the problem. The morally excellent way to deal with the, uh, the problem. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to have to agree with uh, the audience uh, on this one that uh, while we have TIFE, he's not talking about his own achievements at all. He's very, like, achievement, like, not oriented. Um, oof, drop frames. So we got a lot here. Hopefully that stops. Okay, it looks like the drop frames have stopped. Sorry, guys. Um, let's see. But, uh, yeah, but, like, it's pretty affiliative. Like, you can't deny the affiliative whatsoever. He's also talking about the interest uh, while being affiliative. So, yeah, he's definitely straight up. He's an NFJ, for sure. He's an NFJ. But uh, still continuing direct. Now, he seems very outcome-focused. He's more talking about outcomes right now pretty hard and talking about the outcome of, you know, violence and whatnot. And I saw that right at the beginning, you know, very control-oriented, not really seeing the movement. I'm really not seeing the movement. So in reality, he may actually be initiating. So let's keep watching for sure on this. Problem of racial injustice in our country. Is there something about nonviolence that made it? Now you Breezy, obviously, control should not be based on how measured one is during speech. Obviously. What control should be based on is whether or not someone is speaking in terms of outcomes versus processes. Use that in the past tense that made it more useful among Southern Negroes than the ghetto Negroes of the North. I wouldn't say there's uh, anything that makes it more useful to uh, Southern Negroes. I think it is true that uh, we've had more nonviolent movements in the South because uh, the problem for many years was more crystallized and, in a sense, more visible in the South. Uh, we didn't have many civil rights activities on a massive scale in the North until three or four years ago. So I would say it's kind of interesting if you notice like the interviewer is like standing underneath him because you have him standing up above the sky, like from the pulpit, etc. Does that make sense? Like, it's kind of weird how he's doing that. So just keep that in mind in terms of the presentation that's here. Seems very structure oriented. That uh, we just haven't had a chance to experiment on a broad scale with nonviolence in the northern ghetto. I have the feeling that nonviolence is as applicable uh, and workable in the northern ghetto as it is uh, in the south. Now, there's a larger job there. Uh, the frustrations at points are much deeper. The bitterness is deeper. And I think that's because in the south we can see. So he just initiated a completely new point about the ghettos. Uh, so that is initiating. He is talking about outcomes. He's not really talking about processes. Uh, and he's maintaining his affiliative approach and talking about what, uh, you know, the black man is going to be getting out of that situation is very interesting. Pocket surprise. I'm going to have to go with ENFJ on this one, guys. I'm just not seeing anything outside of ENFJ. Progress here and there. We've really made some strides that are very visible, and every Southern Negro knows that he can do things today that he couldn't do four or five years ago. Where in the North, uh, the Negro sees only retrogress, uh, and he doesn't find... The Negro only sees retrogress. That's, again, that's a, uh, an interest-based statement. Uh, so definitely an NF. Um, and uh, gonna have to go with outcome focus. He's talking outcomes. There's just no movement here. So there you guys go. I'm gonna make some notes here of this just to keep that more drop frames apparently. I don't know why my connection is so unstable. So yeah, ENFJ for NLK. Awesome. Oh, 
August Tabrizi wants me to take another interview. Okay, well, if that's really that important, we could take a look. An actual uh, interest in civil rights across the years. Uh, he is a pastor of a large church in Atlanta, Georgia. Incidentally, I'm co-pastor of the church. And uh, he has had a strong interest in civil rights. He has been president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People in Atlanta. And uh, he always stood out in social reform. Do you think he saw that you would be a leader? And do you think he did, in fact, bring you up in some special way to face these responsibilities? Well, I think he certainly realized uh, the need for this. And uh, after I decided to enter the ministry, uh, he constantly stressed the need for leadership. And I'm sure that he hoped that I would stand out uh, in this area. He's talking about other people. He's not really talking about himself. That's S-E-N-I. He's talking about what this other person is getting out of the situation. That's interest-based. He's direct. Talking about outcomes, etc. Whether he realized uh, that I would do it or not is something else. But he certainly hoped for this. What sort of home did you have as a child? Was it a strict home, for instance? Well, I guess it was a relatively strict home. Uh, Coming up in, in a minister's home, uh, I faced uh, the discipline that you... I mean, like, this guy's attitude, like, directly matches the attitude of the person that I wrote, like, a 40 to 50 paragraph letter to a few nights ago, staying up till, like, 3 in the morning, and that person is an ENFJ. So it just, it, it makes perfect sense to me, you know, this guy being an ENFJ. So that's more than fair. All right, let's, uh, uh, yeah, so, um, definitely, definitely was, uh, olive juice for sure. Olive juice, uh, hashtag olive juice. That's going to be like our next, uh, t-shirt, uh, obviously is olive juice. Thank you for that guys. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Going into the super chats. Awesome. Trying to close some windows here. Let's see. So we don't have. Uh, there we go. All right. And uh, Tyler the medium a few times ago. Tyler Henry the medium. Okay, cool. I got that, Jen. Uh, so just give me a heads up on that. So according to this list, here's the list right now, folks. We're gonna be moving on to the next one. Gonna be doing a, a decently lengthy show today, provided that the stream doesn't like cancel on us like it did before. Uh, so yeah, where is Martin Luther King Jr.? Awesome. Going to delete that. And we got Brett Michaels in there. Um, so next one on the list, uh, Brett Michaels. Uh, Brett Michaels is next. Okay. And then uh, the Sam uh, fellow. So Brett Michaels. Cool. Brett Michaels um, interview. Cool. What really happened? Okay. The big interview with Dan Rather. All right. Well, you were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at age 6. You're going to have... Diabetes! ...this all your life. Right. Is that what drove you into music, you think, or not? The, oddly enough, when I was 6 years old, when you're a kid, it was strange to me, all of it, but I, in a strange way, I accepted it. I was like, okay, they're giving me shot after shot. You're doing blood tests every, probably every hour. It was never easy but I dealt with it and without a doubt being a diabetic 
made me grow up really quick and it was 1,000% a driving force behind what I would become. Um, it helped me to also become tougher. You know, as I got into the early parts of my career and the critics were brutal, I mean brutal, it helped me to deal. I said, if I can do five injections a day and every day is a life and death struggle at times, I can surely do with someone, you know, throwing some words at me that don't like me. And, and I learned to deal with that. Well, guys, you, you've movement. had to learn to deal with not just the type one diabetes, but, and I'm, I'll probably leave out something here, you had an emergency appendectomy. Right. You had a serious heart problem. Correct. You had... Right. Correct. Because I'm direct AF and TIFE at the same time. Mm-hmm. Move on to the other one. I have a question for you. Right. Will you continue to stay in this studio and rock my world and threaten me with a good time? Because you know where I'm going. You Okay. okay. I, I, and the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> you so, know I love you, so yes. <laughs> so 10 years ago, right. April 2009, was a okay. very dark day in cable. It was the day of the series finale of Rock of Love. Yes. Cable's never been the same ever I, since. Thank you. I, I was agree. obsessed <laughs> with this show. I don't watch the Super First of all, thank you for saying that. It was we, when when we did that show. First of all, I want to say this very clearly: the girls on every season of that made that show awesome. Right? I wasn't allowed to be choosing any. I said, just bring it in. I said, the one thing I had when we first started to do this show that no one ever knew was the first time it came around, and we started to discuss it because I'm always a co-creator and stuff. And I said, I'm always a co-creator and stuff. And and I said, you know. Pretty concrete. Gonna have to give him that. Uh, I wasn't allowed to choose any of the girls. That was an interest-based statement. Uh, talking about uh, other people consistently, more so than himself. Seems SENI, so we're looking like an STP NFJ Quadro, which means a Templar. A good chance of a Templar, so let's keep going. The first time it came around, they wanted to throw it back to the early days, the early look, and I said, here's the deal, I can't do that. I said, I'm going to have to walk away from this because it has a shelf life of one episode. My acting skills are extremely <laughs> limited. But if you live here and now in the world I'm living in and you take all the bus parties I've done, the great backstage parties, all these things that go on, I said, we will make this fun. But the girls, you know, are I want them to have fun. I want them to compete. Let's make the show crazy and fun. Right. And so it gets. Let's make the show crazy and fun, right? Okay. Again, more T-I-F-E, S-E-N-I, um, very movement. The guy is like super, super movement. So it looks like we're going to have to be between ISTP or INFJ, uh, but he just seems way more ISTP. And specifically, I'd say probably ENFJ focused ISTP because he's just so SE focused trying to give everyone a good experience and whatnot but let's let's keep going with that it went away for a while rock of love went away for a bit and then it came back celebrity house interview all right i'll do that uh brett michaels celebrity house interview cool all right Brett Michaels, my office. I want to have a better. Let's see. To make that house your home, you got to put your sweat, blood, tears, and a few scars and a couple curse words into it. <laughs> you got to put your blood, sweat, and tears, a uh, few scars. A couple of curse words into it. That's very pragmatic, very interest-based. Again, S-E-N-I and T-I-F-E, if I've ever heard of that. That guy is like straight up an ISTP, but let's let's keep watching a little bit more. What a beautiful house. This is the great room here. First thing I noticed, the absolute first thing I noticed is they put a ton of detail into this. This was an absolute labor of love. This house may rock my world. 
So this is the dining room here. Kitchen is, it's like the heartbeat of the whole house. Right. And the way you did the island and all this stuff, it's really laid out nice. I can use this word and truly mean it. There is no cookie cutter going on no, here. No, no. First. I can use this word and truly mean it. There's no cookie cutter around here. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Again, with the pragmatic, very, uh, very concrete for sure. Labor of love, definitely. Still direct. So yeah, he's an ISTP. So there you go, Brett Michaels, ISTP. Awesome. Let's move on to the next one. So, oof. and yeah, let's get that there, and then here, and then here. Cool. Awesome. Why does it keep telling me drop frames? And let's do another one here. All right, so delete that one, deleting that one. All right, who's next? Who's next? Um, remember, guys, top one has the highest bid. So ER wants Owen Benjamin. All right, so ER, you got it next, Mr. Uh, Owen Benjamin. Uh, let's do that one. And. Uh, Owen uh, Benjamin uh, interview. Okay, cool. Stand up set. Owen TV spotlight on versus Marlon Wayans. Comedian on being 6'7 has its downsides. I, I would imagine it does, actually. Heidi and Frank interview Owen Benjamin. Okay, let's do that one. Let's do that one. Now, here's Heidi and Frank on 95.5. That you've been able to lease a car. Yeah, no, I bought a Camry and I stuck with it. I've still got her. She's you got awesome. the old Camry. Oh, wow, Camry's a Let me teach you something, man. This, this microphone. That guy is pretty initiating. Like, just straight off the bat, you know, he's initiating. So, okay. Let's just get my notes here. Appropriate, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin there. And we're gonna go here. Oops, and let's not like destroy the stream. And then Owen Benjamin right up here. Awesome. O and B, fine, it'll work. Work for us. One goes sideways, so you like that, so you can talk right into it sideways. Hmm. Is it a condenser, dynamic? What kind of, is it a cardioid? <laughs> it's a, it's a, a cardioid. It's a, it's a uh, Newman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Newman. Yeah, I don't know. I took an audio class. Audio is key. <laughs> audio is key. Audio is key. That is true. Now, with, with the weird thing about Comedy Central and your special uh, high five till it hurts going to be on tonight. I took an audio class. Audio is key. He seems direct, but he initiated there. He might be cognitive transitioning. He seems movement, though. He really does see movement. Let's keep going. Night, which means we get to hear the dirty language because Comedy Central's weird. Like if it's on at nine o'clock at night, they bleep certain words, but if it's on later, you really get. The yeah, whole... no, you get the whole deal. I'm not really that dirty in it. I yeah. think they uh, there's a couple swear words in it. I think they were kind of pushing me to be dirtier because their demo is so young, and I'm just like, nah, I don't really have too much. Yeah, you don't normally play that angle. No. He doesn't work blue, as they say in the biz. It, yeah, no no blue. I mean, I'll, I'll be a little blue, blue conceptually, but not when it comes to... Because I used to open for Julio Iglesias, and that's oh. kind of where I learned that. <laughs> wow, that guy is so initiating, and he's informative. Wow. Wow. Just, like, completely changing his points there. Uh, very pragmatic uh, with what he said. I actually caught a statement of abstraction where he started... Oh, gosh, what did he say? I need to... Go backwards so I could show you the abstract point he made. Hold on. Let me go backwards here. Normally play that angle. No. He doesn't work blue as they say in the biz. It, yeah, no, no blue. I mean I'll be a little blue. Blue conceptually, but blue conceptually. <laughs> he's, he's actually informally saying with uh with a subtext there that like he might be depressed in that moment. That's what he's actually saying. So that's an informative statement, adding that there. So informative initiating movement. This guy's a starter type for sure. But let's keep going. But not when it comes to, because I used to open for Julio Iglesias, and that's oh. kind of where I learned that. <laughs> oh, because they did that for Julio Iglesias, and that's kind of like where I uh, learned that's also initiating. There you go. You know, so was this guy an ENTP or is he an ES or is he an ESFP? Not sure. <laughs> where it's like if you can make five thousand uh, seventy-year-old Hispanic women <laughs> laugh, 
You can make anyone laugh, and that's just a bigger market. You know, it's, it's like, and the other day, it's still my. If you can make them laugh, you know, and that, that's a bigger market. Like, wow, systematic, if I've ever uh, heard. Nice, nice. Because uh, he just talked about his system of, hey, if I can make this person laugh, I can make anyone laugh, you know? Job as well, and I don't want to exclude anyone. Right. And, and there's a huge amount of people. Oh, and I want to do this job well, and I, want to, I don't want to exclude anyone. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. T-I-F-E being all exclusion, uh, non-exclusionary. So it's like, okay, well, there you go. And form initiating movement with TIFE basically means this man is either ESFJ or ENTP, just just based off of that. Looks like he's an NT so far, but let's keep going. Make sure People he's not cognitive transitioning into INTP subconscious from an ESFJ. Don't want to hear swearing, so why do it? I don't need to. People don't want to hear swearing. That is an NE statement talking about what people don't want to hear. Uh, although that could be an SE statement because it's like, this is an experience I want to avoid. But he did it from an affiliative point of view. Sounds like an affiliative cognitive uh, transition, but uh, we're still going to stick to and the affiliative uh, point there anyway, just to have it there. Yeah, the, I've uh, gone to one of Owen's shows. It's actually the Sullivan and Son uh, con of the uh, flappers and on it and and are and they know it's true <laughs> they just deal with it and move forward <laughs> it because, was like i, I can do a q a <laughs> i don't have to do my stuff yeah i don't need to do it if, if i it's kind of like you feel like you're molesting the crowd where it's like if you're not into this i can bail like i'm not gonna make you listen to a stand-up have night. you ever just been wow that's like super pragmatic if i've ever heard one and that was abstract <laughs> holy smokes that's, that was hilarious. You know, I'm not going to... Here, let's listen to it again. Like, if you're not into this, I can bail. Like, I'm not going to make you listen. If you're not into this, if you don't want to hear this, N-E, I mean, I could bail. I, I have better things to do with, like, my time right now. T-I-F-E, S-I-N-E, very pragmatic, abstract. Uh, so, yeah, uh, definitely, this man is uh, hands down an ENTP. There you go, folks. Owen Benjamin is an ENTP. Let's update my uh, notes here for Mr. Owen Benjamin uh, being an ENTP. I like that guy a lot. I'm actually probably watch some more of his stuff now that I know there's another ENTP comedian that I haven't checked out yet. So definitely going to be checking that guy out for sure as I continue to ruin my own whiteboard here for some reason. So uh, definitely ruining my own whiteboard. All right. So who is next, by the way? Let's find out. Ooh, let's find out as I use self-discipline to carefully erase the board here without erasing everything else that I have. So more drop frames, of course, because that's what I do after every freaking time. Okay. Uh, delete. Okay. Adding for FKA twig. So there's 25, 25. I think 25, and then we have Sam Hewn, or whatever his name is, but the other one is in. So, uh, Zane Lowe interview, FKA Twigs. Looks like that's the top bid, so that's what we're going to do next, FKA Twigs. Please, God Almighty, like, actually have footage, because Basic Betty's, I think the last couple ones she did, and correct me if I'm wrong, I might be wrong, Basic Betty, but I was having a hard time with the available footage. So let's see if we actually got it here, okay? FKA Twigs interview. What a weird name. You know, Zane Lowe Magdalene interview. Okay. So we're in Vancouver, East, East Vancouver, I think. Is that right, Hunter? East side, Vancouver. You're rehearsing down the road? Yes. Um, but we're somewhere else and, uh, and this is really nice. What is this, a Rihanna clone? Is that what this is? Are we looking at another Rihanna ISFP clone right now? I mean... This is all kind of in, re in relation to your life set, isn't it? The, this drapery and dressing. Yeah, this is... Oh, that's right. Uh, Jennifer Stone, I'll get you next. I got you. Don't worry about it. It's from Magdalene too. Yeah, incredible. And uh, you're preparing for a new run, which starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How are rehearsals going? Um, I've not started yet. Really? Yeah. Straight after this, <laughs> back in. <laughs> oh my God, isn't the show starting this tomorrow? Yeah. Right. You feeling okay about it? Yeah. Totally. I was think I was watching this really interesting documentary on the way. Wow, like I need to like stop initiating it like every 10 seconds. I didn't come here to like listen to this. I, I came here for the FK Twigs, you know what I'm saying? 
Super responding. But let me ask you guys, does she have like the INFJ WISP or are we looking at an ISFP here? You know what I'm saying? Uh, not really sure about that. Definitely SENI, especially with like how she's dressed and whatnot. Definitely SENI, definitely responding. Uh, but let's, uh, let's keep going. We're over here about this older band that came up in the early 90s punk scene called Jawbreaker, who I loved. Don Angel 200 and Czechoslovakian money. And the essence I got from it was that people used to go out there and perform with zero rehearsal, zero ideas of what they were going to do just to release, just to get things out. Okay. And you do that, but you also put so much into rehearsal to make sure that the timing and the emotion is connected. To sure, I'm starting rehearsals today to refine everything, but the preparation for this tour has been like... Years. Yeah, well, for this, I'd say like a year long. Mm -hmm. So I'm just not stressing because I know that I know it all. Do you know what I mean? I know it's all in there. Um, there's some revisions from like the first Magdalene tour, but the practice means that the like recall is sharp and we're all tight as a band. We know all the music. It makes sense because... Uh... Gonna have to test against ENTJ with this one, just in case. Gonna have to test against ENTJ, but uh, seemed very uh, informative responding. That was uh, an outcome statement where she's talking about, you know, the amount of preparation and what they're gonna try to get out of that. Um, so... Let's uh, hope that we don't have too many drop frames. I keep dropping frames, guys. My bad. I may have to restart the stream if that happens. We'll see if it kicks me off. If it does kick me off, I'll be right back. I won't be leaving tonight uh, till I officially close the show over. But uh, definitely going to be... Uh, uh, yeah, okay, fine. But, I mean, CZ USA exists. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just kidding. <laughs> And I think what people may not know, maybe maybe real fans will know this. Um, in most learning, I wouldn't even say practicing, just learning yeah. and trying to master and then apply. Yeah. So what leads you into a place where you want to learn martial arts and you want to learn any particular form of dance? And I know you have a huge open curiosity. Through a direct... Someone, please tell that guy, Zane Lowe, to shut up. ...to call Chloe Zhao. We kind of had quite a fun but lonely and disastrous can film festival together a few years ago okay why okay we we learned this thing together a few years ago okay yeah that was an achievement of mine that's f-i-t-e and that was also pretty responding a little bit informative due to subtext that was attached to that statement because she had subtext in there uh, that's why the guy's like yeah why why because he wanted to know because he's a ti user uh, well chloe was you know relatively new director then she's now gone on as directing an incredible marvel movie but back then she was quite unknown and um she back then she was quite unknown back then se she was se unknown te yeah okay thank you for that so yeah there you go sfp ntj quadra for sure and informative responding control means basically she's just an isfp just off right off the bat uh, we also know she's concrete. She hasn't done any what ifs. And uh, that's basically about it. So, yeah. FK Twigs. She's an ISFP straight up. I like I can't even I can't even go beyond that. So there's, there's really no point. So, like I said, Rihanna ISFP clone was my immediate reaction to her. It's like, OK, yeah, it's kind of like going to be how it is. So. All right, cool. Let's do uh, Tyler the medium next. Uh, Tyler the likely I'm an INFJ medium. Um, so let's see how that goes. Uh, Tyler the medium. Or maybe he's an INFP. <laughs> Who knows? Definitely an NF, right? Talks to talks Hollywood medium Chloe okay, uh, medium Tyler Henry that who it is. Ryan talks to talking to the dead Hollywood Tyler opens up about. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Joe Drake, and I'm so excited because joined with me today is Tyler Henry. How are you? Doing great, thank you for having me. Yeah. 
So wow. it's actually very overwhelming. I can feel the energy of the people um, above me, below me, right. to the side. And is it worse outside or inside? It's kind of just all over. Okay. It's just like a, a hyper awareness of like, just a lot going on. Wow. So what are you feeling in this building? In the building? Not or in like, this room? Not much, but not much. it's just kind of like, the way I would describe it is like static kind of like having constant static and okay. some places you go it's like stronger than others right aside from the static is there a physical feeling that you're uh, going through doing a reading I well in a reading it, it's very different than when I just kind of go about my day-to-day -day life right I always say my sixth sense uses the other five senses to communicate so okay. for example when I'm doing a reading ooh, <laughs> I'd say my sixth sense uh, has my other thing okay the guy's an ENTP like I don't care <laughs> the guy's an ENTP like <laughs> Straight up, like seriously, <laughs> super, super abstract, informative initiating movement. Like, come on, you know, informative initiating movement. I'm abstract, you know, lol. And I'm not, you know, this is the experience I'm having. Use my expert intuition. And, you know, I'm like trying to be all logical about it, but I'm being systematic by telling you that my sixth sense uses all my other five senses, LOL, because I'm an ENTP. Like, come on, uh, let's verify against ENTP, like seriously. Reading, I might get a physical sensation that corresponds with how someone died. Right. So if someone had a heart attack, I might get a chest pain. And then other times um, I might get a smell, I might hear a noise, I might okay. have an internal vision. And I basically have to take all of those impressions and turn it into a relevant message. Because oh, okay. I'm big on validation and specifics right. for information. Oh, I'm big on validation and specifics for information. Very TI. Not talking about accomplishments. More of the how-to. Wahoo. How, how can you differentiate when you just happen to have a chest pain? Right. Like, when do you need a Tums? Yeah, or is it... exactly. I've actually had times where it's, it's been a struggle to discern between my own physical pain and the client's physical pain. Okay. And there was actually a situation uh, right when I started working professionally where I had a client that was going to go do a re Right, where I started working professionally because I'm an SI user and I had a client that did this at this time because I'm reaching into my past. Waiting for her and my kidneys were hurting and I was complaining to my mom and she's like, Oh yeah, and my kidneys were hurting and I was complaining to my mom because I was doing all this SI, 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 SI stuff while talking insanely fast and being movement and like cutting myself off in my own conversations because I'm a starter type because I can't finish my own sentences just like Mr. C.S. Joseph can't either because I'm informed, I'm, in, I'm informed initiating movement which means I'm automatically, I'm a starter type so I'm ESFJ or ESFP or ENTP or ENFP but then like I'm SINE like all the starter types except for the ESFP so I can't be an S ESFP but I'm very TIFE so that means I could even only be like an ESFJ or I could be an ENTP but because like you know I'm like super mega abstract you know because like I'm not being concrete about like literally everything I'm saying in the sentence like I'm an automatic ENTP lol thank you very much ladies and gentlemen oh yeah right so okay thank you so cool we are done with title of the medium I like I I'm not even gonna I'm gonna go further with that like holy smokes you know okay boomer okay you know is that is that the name of the new yoda child in the mandalorian uh is that is that is that what the name is boomer are we calling him boomer is that is that what we do not baby yoda we call him boomer okay boomer so <laughs> yeah thank you jennifer stone thank you i'm gonna delete that one and go into delete, uh, let's see, where's the other one? Cool. I'm going to delete that one. Okay, now uh, we're back to, um, let's see, uh, here we go. Um, Tyler, the medium, ENTA Pi. Okay. All right. Someone wants them some Trent Reznor. Nice. Nice, the man who's rumored to be an ENTP, mm, Trent Reznor. He wrote my favorite song, uh, Hurt, and Johnny Cash did a cover on it. It was the dopest. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so we did FKA Twigs, deleting that one, and then we did this one. And then I'm gonna make sure I update my FKA Twigs, which is ISFP, LOL. All right drop frames because that's what i like doing for some reason is i drop frames and the highest one that we have is trent reznor is next jane rage comes in steals the show oh yeah cool so trent reznor so 
And no, don't worry. I don't know if this guy is an ENTP, but uh, like everyone I've ever talked to has told me my whole life that Trent Reznor is a teen ENTP. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so we'll check that out. Okay. Trent Reznor interview. All right. 1994, yeah. 2005, oh yeah, cool. For the record, I hope he's not an ENTP. I hope he's like something different so I can debunk the common stereotype. Does Nine Inch Nails exist? Um, yes, it does exist. <laughs> uh, in the studio, Nine Inch Nails has been just me because I, originally I couldn't find anybody else that was in thinking the way I was thinking. And I was living in Cleveland and there wasn't a lot of um, people thinking the same way. So I could just bitch about it and not do anything. A lot of people thinking the same way. I could just bitch about it or not, uh, you know, that's pragmatic. Uh, the guy's pretty pragmatic. He's definitely movement as well, talking about his process. So, movement and pragmatic. Getting close to ENTP, hopefully not. Or just do it myself. So I tried to do it myself, and then it became kind of fun. And Talking about doing it oneself. Oh, yeah, because, like, I'm pragmatic, and then it became, like, kind of fun. Awesome. Got a record deal and did an album and by myself, and then got a band together to kind of play the stuff live because I, I wanted to make it appear to the public to be a band because I think it's more interesting. No, it was something I could hide behind, in a way. Um, and then that band toured for a couple of years, and then we just kind of imploded upon each other, and we got sick of each other, and a lot of weird things was happening with the record label that we were on, and we'd gone... Talking we this, we this, we this, we this, we this, S-E, very S-E. Kind of seems to be direct and definitely responding, so could be INTJ now. So, volume's a bit low. Okay, I'll fix that. Gonna update that there. There you go. Went from being a small little underground band to playing on Lollapalooza and getting big in a strange way where it was uncomfortable. You know, playing uh, playing in Lollapalooza, talking about uh, achievements to TE achievements, not really TIFE. Let's look at this one. Thanks for your time, much appreciated. You live here in Los Angeles now, is that right? Or? I do, actually, I live here. That's, uh, I think people might be, find that a little perplexing. Uh, you know, why, why LA? You know, I... Um, I came out here to work on this album and write it, actually. I just needed a change of uh, scenery. I'd been living in New Orleans for a long time, so on and off since 1990, I think. And it just, uh, it just felt kind of stale. You know, I needed to see, have a different view out the window. So I also kind of wanted to be around some other people to do what I do. And, you know, it's, it's part of my nature is to isolate, and I think, um, Living in New Orleans was a good way just to kind of hide from the world. And it worked for a while, but at the end, I, think I just needed to get out of there. So, it's uh, Trying to hide from the world, said every INTJ ever. Direct responding movement. Again, very pragmatic. Uh, talking about that, like, hey, this is the best thing for me because I'm systematic. So direct responding movement and pragmatic systematic basically means he's an NT who's just direct responding movement and just on interaction style, temperament alone, T-I-F-E-S-E-N-I, -E -E we know that Trent Reznor is definitely an INTJ, which ENTP focused, but that's fantastic. I like this guy's an INTJ, awesome. Really like that. So, uh, cool. Let's uh, move on to the next one. So, ooh, Joel Zerman, AKA Dead Mouse. Awesome. All right, let's see who's next. I'm gonna add in uh, Trent Reznor, uh, INTJ. Cool. Let's 
keep going here. We're gonna delete this, get rid of these windows, can't have too many windows. We'll be opening up Discord again. Awesome. Add on the map pat. Oh my gosh. Uh, 33. Looks like I have to do some math. Uh, okay. Oh. Let's see. Okay. All right. So, um, So, Jean Soyland is uh, Joel Zimmerman, aka Dead Mouse. That's actually at ten dollars. All right, Sam Hewn at I believe uh, thirty-five, uh, which brings us above uh, Cesar Milan. Uh, Itambien Harry Styles is thirty as well. So it looks like. Uh, Sam Hyun, and then uh, Cesar Millan, and then Harry Styles uh, after that. And then uh, let's delete that one there. And then uh, Cesar Millan. Cool. I believe that is the next one in the list. All right, cool. So we are doing Sam Hyun this time. I hope I'm saying his name right. Please don't shoot me. Uh, Sam H. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Hugen? Hugen? No idea. Let's see. Sam Hugh Outlanders dishes about his snack stealing co star. All right. Uh, isn't Scottish enough for fans? Okay. Whatever. Um, let's see. Jimmy Kimmel. Take a look at that. Damn, there's been I don't know if you pay attention to this sort of thing, but there's a lot of excitement around your appearance here, uh, particularly from uh, women. Wow. This is fantastic. You know you really have something going on when your fans give themselves a group name yes. and form a community. Yes, we have a great group of fans. They're called the Hooligans. The uh, Hooligans. They are almost, almost as big as the Kimmels, I think. Uh... <laughs> You're going to be shocked to learn there are no... I do not have a fan group. We need with to start that now, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. be the first guy. Oh, yeah. good. That yeah. would be nice. Yeah. And you yeah. follow me around, and maybe I'll call the police on yeah. you every yeah, once in a sure. while. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was and about that... to compliment you on your, your suit. Oh, I was about to compliment you, you know, on your suit, because, like, I'm initiating, you know, because... And then I'm just going to let, you know, C.S. Joseph just, like, completely just start erasing his entire whiteboard. And, you know, that's a... That's a, but yeah, very, uh, very informative. I have to say, I'm going to compliment you on your suit because T-I-F-E, okay, you know, so initiating T-I-F-E. It actually looks like a little bit plaid, like tartan there. Oh, yes, because yeah. you are from Scotland, that's correct? Right. That's, yes, that's, yes. That's, that's right. You Scottish accent in Outlander, you had an English accent in this movie. Yes. And he did a little bit of an American accent in the movie also. Do you have to, do they know, like, before you get a job offer like this, mm -hmm. do they know for sure you could do those accents or do you just tell them? I, I generally tell them anything they want to hear. So for real? I, as an actor, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just lie. I'll basically lie. And I, I... I'll generally tell them anything they want to hear. Uh, he's being funny, but that's a TIFE statement. Gonna have to say S I N E so far uh, initiating. Um, and uh, I could potentially. I could argue systematic or interest either way, so not entirely sure yet. It seems pragmatic so far, but I'm gonna have to uh, verify that. Switch to a different. Uh, recently on a flight. Yes, I just shot this independent movie in, in Los Angeles and I had, uh, well, as much as I could grow a beard, a full on beard, and uh, my hair was very different and, you know, I was, not training in the gym and trying to be as much as the character as possible, being a writer. And uh, I went a bit incognito, and that was fantastic to be able to sort of go under the radar. Mm, yeah, that was very, very movement. Uh, he cut himself off multiple times, his form of initiating movement. Uh, it was also TIFE. He was also sharing his experiences. So definitely SFJ, NTP Quadra for sure. And. Uh, uh, he was also talking about his system of trying to like get into the character. 
there's a good chance we're looking at another ENTP here. So let's keep going. Did you get someone, uh, did you get sick of everyone asking about your gym routine? What is this question? I mean, I, I, I'm really boring that I love that kind of stuff. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. And during this independent film that I shot, I, hadn't, I didn't work out for like three, four months. So uh, I was dreaming about deadlifting. I was dreaming about deadlifting. That's another SI statement. I am also dreaming of deadlifting right now. Trust me. Uh, so, no, the scarring is is terrific. We've got an amazing makeup and, and hair team. Actually, they were the team that I did believe did the first few uh, seasons of Game of Thrones, and so they, you know, they're very well experienced, and um, you know, have full sort of body castings down in London, and then um, the process each day just for the back is about three hours in the morning. Um, and then wow. an hour in the evening to take it off. But all throughout the day, it needs touched up. It needs reapplied. It needs the, you know, the, the painting of it needs to be, to be done. So it's a... Talking about the system of uh, getting makeup done as well. Uh, still systematic. Born of initiating movement, systematic. So definitely ESFJ or uh, ENTP. Uh, so we're looking between those two. Let's see if we can find more evidence uh, to go beyond there as well. Welcome to the Envelopes Emmy Contender Series. I'm Yvonne Vieira, dying by his men in the battlefield. Yeah. Talk about how entering that. History is told that uh, uh, this battle. Like this guy, he, he is like a straight up clone of Paul Newman. You guys ever notice that? Paul Newman, he was like the main character uh, of Muad'Dib or uh, Paul Atreides in the Dune remake, uh, that little sci-fi Dune miniseries they did. It just looks exactly like the guy. And if I remember correctly, Paul Newman himself is an ENTP. Let's be straight. So it's kind of interesting how that works. Jason Priestley, I think he's an ENTP as well. And he's put all three of those men there. You got to do some like visual typing comparisons. You know what I'm saying? They're all ENTPs, right? Because this guy definitely seems like an ENTP to me, if you know what I'm saying. It's like, okay, that's a little weird. It's a little, little freaky, you know? Well, you know, the Scots are going to be wiped out. So he goes to die. And um, actually, when we were approaching it with the director, you know, it wasn't a, a great sadness, actually. It was like, he's actually... Um, in control here, and he's his. He knows his wife and child will be safe, and so he goes to to commit suicide. There's been this. They they the two characters kind of complement each other in some weird way. There's been this strange bond between them um, from obviously from season one and, and what happened there. So, you know, there's a great sadness to that, and I think we all. Erin, this fool's Erin, believing that she may still be alive. Mm -hmm. but that's really daughter in, in front. So he's he's never had the. Chance no danger. Where is that? I don't know, like an igloo somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> an igloo. Yeah. I like that. Oh, those polar bears. <laughs> but villain would be pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah. I think the villain's always the best part to yeah. play, aren't they? Um, or something, uh, yeah, something historical maybe, like okay. Second World War. The villains are the best to play, you know, and he's like, okay, I said every NCP ever, you know, or something historical says my ISFJ is subconscious, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, like seriously. This guy is, uh, he keeps he keeps going from the systematic standpoint, constantly talking about the best way of how he approaches a character, uh, super si systematic. Um, I'm not really seeing the affiliative at all. He's not making any affiliative to... statements. Slowly aging him. We don't want to go too far. Have you played him at all? See that look? <laughs> okay, gentlemen. So, <laughs> how do you do yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, just when, she, yeah, just, just think of like, I don't know, think of, um, what are you going to have for dinner? And then some guacamole, and some chips, and margarita. There it is. That's a little inappropriate. Uh, and uh, which is why, you know, an affiliated person is probably not going to say that because they're going to be like doing the right thing. So definitely going to have to go with a pragmatic on that one. Got that little SE demon going out there. So yeah, guys, uh, definitely Sam Hewn, definitely ENTP for sure. I mean, look at that Jason Priestley and... Uh, Paul Newman approach, but yeah, uh, Sam Hewn is the uh, uh, ENTP for sure. Uh, G H N E N T P. Cool. We've had three ENTPs tonight. Owen Benjamin and Tyler the Medium. Very interesting. It's kind of interesting. If you if you guys compare like Tyler the Medium with uh, Shane Dawson, 
knowing that Tyler the Medium is actually an ENTP. Can you really tell me that Shane Dawson is not an ENTP after seeing that? Like, come on, guys. Like, let's be straight. Can you can you honestly tell me that? Uh, is that is that is that really how you guys feel? Do you guys really still cling on to the fact that you believe that uh, Shane Dawson is not an ENTP? Are you, are you still clinging on to that? I mean, you guys still demand that I redo Shane Dawson after seeing stuff like this? Really? Do you? I, I gotta know. I'm. I gotta know. People gotta know. So. So. Okay. So. Let's see here. Uh, deleting um, Sam Hewn, and then uh, after that, deleting that one there. Cool. And then going down here, uh, Cesar Mian. Cesar Mian. Okay, está bien conmigo, señores. Vamos, vamos ahorita. César Mignon. César Mignon. Como lo que diga, señores. Vamos conmigo todos los días. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to quit my day job. Trust me. All right, so uh, let's see here. César Mignon uh, interview. Um, okay. Let's see here. Look, if um, if Sam Hume really was an ISFJ, so then why uh, like? He's not very outcome focused. That was like movement the entire time. Like seriously, I mean, I get that they have you know movement, movement shadow and uh, movement subconscious, but the statements that he was making should have been at least somewhat outcome focused, and it really wasn't. He was just talking process the entire time. That's why Mr. Wonka Vision. I just have to maintain he's an ENTP. There's no other evidence to the contrary. Okay, so let's see, Cesar Millan. Okay. Recovering humans to train dogs. See the, the dog whisperer. Full interview. Cool. Address it head on. And many people are not afraid of dogs, but they're afraid of what the dogs can do. Fear is fear. It just comes in different colors. You see, many people are afraid of how their dog is going to interact with you. So. They're more afraid of how their dog is going to interact with you because I'm a TIFE user and I'm an SENI user because I'm obviously an STP NFJ Quadra. Yes, hello Templar. Don't worry about it. You're a part of the big mass of people that exist. And, and, and fear comes because of the lack of knowledge. Okay, so, and that's why I have a show because I came to a country that they love dogs, but they didn't know dogs. Right. So my goal for the world is to make a knowledgeable dog lover world. Yeah. Ooh, my, my preference for the world is make a knowledgeable dog lover world. Okay, well, that's very idealistic. Definitely not T-I-F-E per se. I could actually argue T-E-F-I is. We might be looking at like maybe an E-S-F-P this time. Hmm, I, mean, I was wrong. So interesting. Definitely initiating though. Definitely initiating. And uh, so far, uh, let's keep going on that. Show time. Knowledge is what gives you the power. The love is what takes power away from you. Because a lot of times people give affection at the wrong time. Okay. Right? We were talking about uh, you and I earlier, and yeah. you say, you know, oh, don't worry, my dog won't do anything to you. That's so what that's everybody just says. affection. Right. You see what I mean? They don't understand that there's rules, boundaries, and limitations that need to be followed. Right. Because, like you say, you know, I'm a fr I have a fear for what, however it happened, happened. You know, but a dog actually responds better when the human understands rules, boundaries, and limitations, regardless if you don't have any fear. Okay, so everybody heard that. Just because your dog has never bit someone yeah. does not mean that he won't bite someone. At the same time, people have to learn uh, no touch, no dog, no eye contact. America likes to touch, dog. Ooh, no touch, no dog, no eye contact. That's systematic. Ooh, interesting. Very systematic, cool. You can give eye contact. Right here, your crew, they all wanted to touch my dog, right? And in, in Mexico, you learn no touch, no talk, no eye contact. That's why yeah. we don't get bitten. Right. Americans get bit more often because they like to come into intimate space. 
and the dog is barely getting to know you and the human is, oh my God, I love dogs. <laughs> wow, so initiating, so movement, so informative. Wow, crazy. You see how it feels? Yeah, you, got to, you naturally are gonna turn, that's right, you're gonna turn back. And so then they're gonna blame the dog. I'm a dog lover, why the dog bit me? See, they make it. But I'm a dog lover, why did the dog bit me? Okay, yeah, talk about other things, talk about someone's status, that's a TE statement because they labeled themselves a dog lover, that's a TE statement label. Dog responsible. Right. My goal is to make human responsible by giving the proper knowledge. And what you've done- By giving him the proper knowledge. Okay, yeah, fair enough. That's another TE statement. That is another TE statement. With your brand is incredible. You've really focused a lot, as you say, uh, on helping people change their behaviors yeah. to impact their dogs. Let's take it back. It was, uh, you were a young man, starving you dream big right so that's the good thing about being poor then you come to a country where you know opportunities are pretty much endless right and um, and then I saw the opportunity that instead of training dogs I should train people and nobody was doing that right as an immigrant you look for empty spaces nobody was doing that you know okay I should train dogs instead of people okay very te talking about an achievement and talking about what other people are doing and that to me was an empty space. So before I even start charging, you know, American people, I did it for free. I walk dogs for free. So that's what, that's when they call me the Mexican guy who can walk a pack of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call me the Mexican guy that can work a pack of dogs. That's what they say, S-E, and they call me this, T-E. So definitely hardcore SFP and TJ Quattro, for sure. And for initiating movement, I'd say this guy is likely an ESFP systematic. Well, guess what? That's what his shadow and his subconscious is for. But uh, let's let's try to verify against it. Let's get something else. My so friend, animals don't lie. So mm -hmm. you can think that you are. Doesn't mean you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you come from ego, selfishness, and envy, you're not going to be very clear about how you feel. So a lot of times people come from ego saying, I am confident, but it's ego talking for you versus just being clear about it. Wow, that's some real powerful stuff. Oh my gosh. Talking about adjusting other people's thinking, talking about what other people are doing. That's pretty fantastic. Setting the record straight, INTJ, subconscious, beautiful. Welcome everyone to the School of Greatness podcast. I'm very excited about our guest, Cesar Milan, is in the house. Thank you for thank having you me so in your much. school. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> and you have been an incredible inspiration to so many people for many years. Uh, your TV shows, uh, all the work you do to re rehabilitate dogs and humans. And uh, I told you before the show that I've seen you a few times around town. Yeah. It's always been fun to to watch your journey. And your story is just so incredible. You know, it, what you did to to master having no money and having all the possibilities that you can think of because you become a dreamer. Mm. Master the situation where you're having like no money. Talk about money, you know, all the possibilities. Wow, because he's like NI aspirational, looking to the future, going in that direction. But he's been pretty concrete this entire time talking about the what is, not necessarily the what if. You know, you become a dreamer. It's when you have everything, the dreams, you know, you stop yeah. dreaming. Yeah. And, and that, that the whole, essence of life goes away or you don't get to taste, you don't get to be there for others. You know, so it's, it, it, you go back into a very instinctual self, water, food, shelter, you know, and, and, and helping the family. Yes, yeah, Steve Irvin was also typed in ESSP, uh, Zeke Stencil. That is the, ba the basics of life, if you think about it. So that is the basis of life, if you think about it. That is the reality, if you think about it, TFI, like, like he keeps initiating additional points. He's very movement. He's not talking about outcomes. He's a foreign initiating movement. This man is an ESFP, like straight up. This man's an ESFP. INFJ focused, uh, very well uh, developed ESFP for sure. They are amazing. If you guys haven't watched my season 19 episode on ESFPs yet, please check that out. That's uh, on Patreon gold tier right now. I just released it a couple of days ago. But I talk about how ESFPs are very focused on causalities and how they kind of bumble their way into finding the truth, basically. And that's how they actually, you know, they, they discover the truth kind of like on accident. They don't know what the truth is, but for some reason, the truth just happens to them. It comes to them and they're like, oh, wow, that's true. And for some reason, no one else knows it. I need to tell everybody, basically. And that's kind of like, uh, 
you know, the ESFP way of doing things. And it's kind of like, you know, what, what Cesar Millan is basically saying uh, uh, within, uh, you know, his approach to life, etc. Because he's so focused on finding the cause, all the causalities and managing causalities so he can generate whatever effect he wants, basically. That's why he's talking about being a dreamer, right? It just completely fits the, uh, the ESFP, um, uh, uh, you know, the ESFP uh, thing. So awesome. That was, uh, that was fun. Um, let's go to Cesar Millan. Uh, ESFP está bien conmigo. Entonces es tiempo. Okay, so. Cool. I'm going to delete that one. And then Cesar Millan. Cesar Millan. I'm going to delete that one. Okay. And, uh, okay, let's see here. Okay. Going to, uh, go into here. And then I'm going to do that, do that and that super chats are officially closed now folks super chats are officially closed we're winding down the show now and getting through some additional uh let's get through as many of these as we can uh let's delete that one as well and uh okay so so nba young boy nba young boy seems to be uh oh nope that's not necessarily true uh Matthew Patrick, aka Matt Pat from Game Theory, is next. Awesome, cool. Let's do that. Uh, Matthew. Okay, let's see. Matt Pat uh, interview. Oops. Okay, cool. Q and A from VidCon. Business side of gaming. The game theorists. Okay, tough questions from the game theorists. Matt Pat, Stephanie, Creative Disruption Podcast. Okay, let's get that one here. You don't believe what Disney character Matt Pat wants to be. It's Matt Pat Live, Googling myself. The secret's out. Okay. Never know. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta switch it up now. Oh, yeah. Where's it going? Oh, boy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Feels like work. Um... <laughs> We we don't have an HR department, and this is the reason why. <laughs> would you like me to give you a shoulder massage while oh I'm up God, here? That would yeah. be fabulous. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. How very uh, pragmatic I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, while that is a pragmatic behavior, who knows if the, that actually means he is uh, pragmatic? But let's uh, let's put Matt Pat up here. Cool. Cool. Let's keep going. Yes, the stream is choppy tonight, guys. I'm sorry about that. Here, I have a question for you, Chris. I'm going to turn this interview on its head. Oh, no. Are my shoulder massages at work good? Am I good at shoulder massages? You honestly really are, See, which totally means you need a good shoulder massage. People who give good shoulder massages know what it means to get a bad one. <laughs> you know? It's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question, though. This is from Brian. But now we're starting to get down to those granular levels of the subgenres. Audiences are becoming becoming attuned to those subgenres, and the algorithms are becoming attuned to those sorts of things too. And I think again, that's where the AI starts to become really interesting. Is we as humans only have so many data points that we can really notice and and collect and you know run the experiments on ourselves. But with AI and more computerized technology and this and that to look at all of these data points consume and ingest all of these different videos from all these different creators from all these different verticals and you know look for stuff that we train it to do but then that guy is systematic af holy smokes and he's abstract the man is an en there he is an nt let's find out like i probably an entp let's be straight up this is entp night for some reason i guess but uh let's let's try to prove that him not being an entp you know, he's like wearing all black. Then also look beyond what we train it to do. In this episode, we talk with one of the most successful couples on YouTube, Matthew and Stephanie Patrick. Matt Pat is best known for his channels, The Game Theorist, The Film Theorist, and Stephanie joins him as a co-host for GT Live. In addition to the 20 million subscribers and six- And, and have access and be able to educate themselves. And I think okay. I, we're, we're, the, we're the short, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. 
<laughs> well, anyways, we're gonna have Matt, Matt, and Steph, who I believe are some of the the, the smartest people uh, when it comes to the algorithm on like you know, social media <laughs> well, video. Shucks, that and, means and, a lot, like, Ricky. YouTube, thank you. No, I, I really, yeah, I really, I feel like. Shucks, that means a lot, Ricky. Thank you, because I'm T-I-F-E. Ah, oh, T-I-F-E. Hey. I'm going to be the one that gets a lot of education today, because oh. we're going to have you know, these guys. We're going to geek you, out. Darryl, that have <laughs> a great <laughs> background in great. algorithms. Uh, that's great, because I'm initiating, because I've been initiating this entire time, and oh my gosh, C.S. Joseph can't put enough initiating tick marks around my face while simultaneously being informative in movement. Ha ha ha. So, yeah. Awesome. And um, AI and, and whenever like we go out or anything like that, I'm, I'm always learning something. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of like a uh, selfish indulgence, I guess. <laughs> there we <laughs> we're, go. We're, like, we're, now, we're, we're not like, hey, dance, dance. <laughs> give, us, give us all your knowledge, you know? <laughs> well, we, we feel the same about you. Um, I can give a quick background. Think about think about stuff we're into. Uh, we have, that we're really yeah. excited about right now? Okay, yes, I'll, okay. I'll think about Start it. Start thinking. Hmm. Um, so... So we run uh, the Game Theorist, the Film Theorist, and GT Live YouTube channel. So we have we have three channels. Oh, look at look at all of our achievements because like I'm a T E F I user, LOL, and I'm obviously N I S E, so that means I'm definitely S F P N T J Quadra because I'm a Wayfarer type, and that's why like I'm married to my husband Matthew Patrick because like we're definitely compatible A F. Just so you know. Um, and together there. Oh, quick math. Uh, like Together we have 20, 27 million total social followers yeah. across all the different platforms. Yeah, yeah 20 million coming from uh, from YouTube. And um, we nerd out about all sorts of things in pop culture and basically few. And like she's direct as well, so she's an NTJ. Okay, so gold and silver pair for their relationship. Use entertainment with education um, to look at your favorite movies, TV shows, and video games through the lens of science. So like math, physics, biology, um, to to help you learn something while. Um, doing it through the lens of something you already love. Yeah, a, a recent favorite of ours, actually, that, that went up not too long ago, is we calculated the total number of characters who die in Disney animated movies by, by, by doing things like analyzing, okay, how many people, how many lions and hyenas and plains animals die in Lion King during yeah. Scar's five-year reign, and calculating, like, oh, it's five years because Simba leaves the pride when he's X tall, and then he comes back, and he's a fully maned adult, which is... Yeah, like, there's no point in going further. Matt Pat's and ENTP guys. So, there you go. Awesome. That uh, NTJ elevator pitch. Preach it. Um, that was fun. Uh, uh, definitely, we're going to return to something related to that a little bit later. So let's uh, delete MatPat next. And then MatPat here. Delete. Cool. And looks like Harry Styles. Uh, Harry Styles, and then it's another Harry Styles. No, yeah, okay. Harry Styles is next. You know, I gotta be straight. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's have a little bit. Let's do a little bit of a segue here. I just have to, kind of have to. Ti demands it. A little segue. Let's let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Also, let's add to our Jason Priestley, Paul Newman, uh, Sam Hewn, and let's add um, the guy who plays Klaus Michelson to that. You know, Joseph Morgan. Let's add that to that list. Hey everyone, I'm Leanna. Me in this fourth season. Jamie really is trying to establish uh, a family and a home. Um, for him, this season is about home and uh, 
providing for the, those around him and the ones he loves and uh, really fighting for that. And of course, America is, uh, is not quite fully formed yet, so there's a lot of dangers there. What has it been like for you recreating early America in Scotland? Yeah, there are no fast food joints, <laughs> so there's nothing too incredible how, just perfect incredible to see the... New, so he built... Um, and uh, it is, you know, where they're gonna make their home. This must be the most beautiful land. Now that they actually are together. that he finds something really funny, but he's really good at keeping it together. Me, on the other hand, I just fall apart. It's just because I'm dead inside. <laughs> if Sam... It's just because I'm dead inside, to be honest. You know, I, I actually started to think a little bit more about Wonka Vision's criticisms, and I think I actually have to agree with Wonka Vision. I think I may have jumped on the gun with uh, Sam Hewn because, well... He does seem like an ENTP, definitely ENTP-focused ISFJ is probably the likelihood at this point, folks. Because the more and more, as I've been typing other people, I've been thinking about him the whole time in the back of my head. I'm just like, you know, I think Wonka Vision's actually correct on this one. I think he is actually an ISFJ, uh, to be honest. Especially with like, that last statement he just said. It's like super ISFJ. And honestly... To be fair, I have the hardest time personally typing ISFJs. It's so difficult to me because I could see the other sides of mine so easily. But usually in interviewed situations, because they're just naturally uncomfortable in that, they have the cognitive transition to get through them, which makes it even a little bit more difficult to detect an ISFJ because of just how behind the scenes they are in general. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm going to have to go with Wonka Vision on this one for sure. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah, guys, I am uh, definitely officially changing my typing of Sam Hewn from ENTP to ISFJ at this point. I just, uh, going through all the information back in my mind, definitely ENTP focused ISFJ based on what I'm going for. Gonna have to uh, go with that for sure, so. Has a very emotional scene to shoot, then he spends a lot of time in his trailer beforehand. Oh yeah, spends a lot of time in his trailer beforehand because like he's super introverted and behind the scenes. Yeah, nice. <laughs> if Katrina found a super cute kitten on set, then she would probably take it home, but it would cause a lot of upset between the kitten and her fat cat Eddie. Yeah. Uh, wow, and his comment about being dead inside is so like fi critic if you think about it. So yeah, definitely like because an ENTP just doesn't care about that, but he obviously does. So yeah. He's nice, FJ. So, uh, can I definitely uh, make that change for sure on that one? So, yeah. Cool. Thank you all for the criticism. Let's move on to the next one. So, at the end of the day, I care about the truth, folks. I don't care about anything else. But uh, Harry Styles is next. Let's move on to Harry Styles. Awesome. Harry Styles interview. All right, cool. Zane Lowe, fine line interview. More Zane Lowe. Gosh, that guy needs to like stop. Please someone tell that guy to stop. direction okay why didn't you connect with california too, like when i'm home oh i've been away for so long mm -hmm. i didn't you know i hadn't seen my friends for so long i was i didn't know who was around i was kind of like who do what I is this strange reality home? yeah so there was a point i guess where i realized i was more comfortable being on the road than so what'd you do after five home. days did you head back off again yeah, and I was like happy to get to go. I, was, you know. I think it's actually understandable. I, I think there's something about that kind of gypsy lifestyle, which in particular the arts that make you travel music and such, and the idea of having sort of a, a desire to be or something, you right. know. But also everything about it felt, felt like it was like this is a new challenge. And if it takes me to London, then... The whole thing great. seemed to me to just be a new... And if it takes me to London, great. I mean, okay. 
when anyone says that and it's like, oh, that's just not what the outcome of that is movement, like straight up, that's movement. Mr. Harry Styles is being all movement oriented. This man is movement. And he also seems to be an S E N I user as well, as near as I can tell. But let's keep going. New challenge. It was crazy watching it kind of from a distance and yeah. watching what you and your. Someone please tell Zane Lowe to shut up. Uh, it is so hard to get through these with this guy constantly talking. Your friends were kind of going through and, and the whole thing. I mean, I suppose with the benefit of some. Like save up the exact amount. Yeah. But you'd have to account for like the postage and packaging. So you'd actually have to like save up for this amount. You know, you're kind of like doing this and then you move to London and you work doing stuff that's fun and you're like, can I buy this t-shirt? And someone's Oh, someone that's fun. Can I buy this t-shirt? That is interest based. That's an interest statement. Cool. It's like, uh, yeah, if you want. And you're like, okay. And that kind of feels like what life is like. <laughs> yeah, then. then it just goes from t-shirt to, of, to so, flat, from flat um, to house to, if you know, you're so. lucky enough to, to, to have that kind of success. I mean, I, I'm in war. Probably like a birthday meal I had with some friends. I used to live next to a Chinese restaurant. Um, <laughs> And it was like my favorite restaurant. <laughs> so I used to. I used to live next to a Silver Spoon as well, and it was my favorite restaurant. Probably still is my restaurant. I especially enjoyed going to the Silver Spoon in Federal Way. No, wait a minute. Is it Everett? Is it or Linwood, Washington? Uh, one of those. That Silver Spoon specifically. I'd always get the Thai fried rice with chicken. It was dope. Come home from school every day. I'd get up to my bedroom, like open the window and stick my head out. To smell like, it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know? And uh, that was like where I went for my birthday meals. But I'd, I'd say probably the, the biggest stuff would probably be, there was a river, it's called the River Dane, where, you know, everyone would go down in the summer and you'd buy that, those little... Yeah, definitely Essie and I again. And uh, uh, definitely um, seems very concrete. Not really, he's talking about the what is, not really, so very SP. But uh, seems responding and definitely direct with what he's going for. So direct responding movement. This guy would have to be an ISTP, basically, uh, uh, given uh, what's going on. But let's keep going. Doesn't, not sure about ISTP, though. I'm just really not sure. But we'll see. Disposable barbecues he used to take. And someone would be in charge of, like, buying sausages. And someone would have to buy the drinks. The Tinfoil like, barbecues used to put on yeah, the Yeah, and you, like, put them on the floor. So we were like oh, we're gonna be in the paper. Like, that's crazy. So the five of us like, walk, like left this little bungalow and walked down to the news agents and got the paper and then came back and had breakfast and we're all just like sitting, staring at the paper and like passing around the paper. And we're like, let me see it again, let me see it again. And uh, I don't know, I guess just cause we had, we just didn't know what was gonna happen. It's a timeless we image. Just, that's a timeless we just, image. We were so, happy about it that first hmm. gosh i could almost make an argument for affiliative need need more power yeah she does that and yeah. and uh, now <laughs> you've you have we, met we've met we've before met and before. you got the pajamas i sent you i'm glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and they look better on you than they would on me it's a nice thing harry styles threw up here and apparently it was, it was a few years ago, but they're replacing it. When it gets that, if it ever rains, they replace it, the fans, with the thing. And is it true? Did you throw up there? Uh, I did throw up there, yeah. <laughs> um, I think my mum put that sign up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, like, that is so odd. It's, it's interesting, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little niche, maybe. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they're amazing. Yeah, because all, all, no, all those people on eBay selling your, your, your air, it, the air you... I didn't know what you were going to say there now for a second. <laughs> <laughs> selling your vomit, it comes into the bottles, you know. <laughs> Harry, there you go, Harry... <laughs> hey, quite well so Thank far. You. Yes. Or <laughs> uh, country. I mean, are you now more album than nervous, if you know what I mean? Um, I am excited because I've, I'm really proud of it and I've, I've worked quite hard on it, and, uh... Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard if I see it yeah. right. I don't know, he seems way more INFJ to me. Just kind of, kind of got that little, 
little SC Inferior vibe going. You know what I'm saying? It's got, it's got that vibe. So it's he so worked so hard! <laughs> Like, it's got that SE inferior insecurity being around, like, so many people having to perform for them. But, yeah, kind of seems like it to me. But, uh, I mean, I'm trying to argue for ISFP. <laughs> hey, I've got a, I've got a... Really proud of it. Hey. Oh, there it is. Jealous much? Look what I've got. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the right way up? I'm not sure. I actually don't have one of those. So okay. I, I do. It's quite good. You've worked really hard on it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's out on 12th of May. That's the important thing. 12th of May. Uh, no, here's the question. So, you're solo now. And yes. You were solo material. This is Apparently. all new to you, the mm -hmm. performing. Song. So, is it just lovely being by yourself? Or is there a bit of kind of, a, oh, a kind of, a tiny bit miss being in the band? Um, <laughs> but I don't, I don't feel on my own. I have an amazing band um, who I feel very lucky to get to play with. They're amazing. Yeah. And, uh, giving credit to other people. He's just not really taking credit, guys. I'm just not seeing so much of the TE there. I just so TF. He's giving someone else kudos. He's not really bringing it on himself, right? That's like, that's more FE. That's not FI. I can't argue FI very well. I'm trying, I'm trying really hard, but I'm seeing direct responding movement. I'm not seeing control either. He'd be talking, uh, like, is he literally just like Rihanna? Is he really that person? Like, that seems pretty... I think that's pretty FE oriented. So, like, seems pretty INFJ to me so far, but let's keep going. Let's go back to the other one. Real piece of, like, recognition. There's two girls outside. And we're like, why? And they're like, they're, they're like, looking for you. And we were all just like, but we're in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, that was like another. It's super of, innocent. The same, yeah. Yeah, and I mean that was kind of thing. Like, oh my god, that's so crazy. Like, we're in Sweden. How? How? You know. Fast forward to the end of it, and you are out here a few months afterwards, and like that decompression leading into the writing of the first album, right? Leading into your self-titled album. That I, I wanted to start writing at some point, um, and that's kind of why I came out here. And I started with Kid Up Burn. So Sweet Creature was the first song we did. That was like in my mm. first writing sessions when I kind of started like... Because up, up until that point, I'd done a lot of sessions with different people and I tried to write with as many different people as possible just to feel like... Just to like learn. Yeah. I just wanted to learn. It was like... The best way I've ever heard songwriting described is like... It's kind of like surfing in that you can practice getting up on the board as much as you want and sometimes the wave just doesn't come or the wave comes but you haven't practiced getting up on the board enough every now and again you've practiced enough and the wave comes and that's when you, you write, write that song. the song yeah super interest based and uh gosh it's so hard i i can't say abstract i really can't i want to I want to definitely res direct responding movement. We got that figured out. Definitely S E N I for sure. T I F E for sure. It's I S T P or I N F J. It's one of those. So let's really focus on the temperaments, guys. Let's keep going. That's when that's when it comes yeah. through. That's when the music, so, everything's in the right place. So I kind of always wanted to be prepared to stand up on the board whenever the wave came. Do you surf? Not enough. I wish I surfed more. I actually, the waves out here are really, in are really intense. <laughs> yeah. And I think the last time I surfed was here and I got absolutely beaten up. I kept like flipping, it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good look until you get in the water and you realize right. that you're a little out of your depth, literally. Um, how important was this thing so I can go and make my own record? Yeah. You know? So did the end of it creep up on you? So he keeps talking about doing my own record, doing my own thing. That's a sign of pragmatism, guys. It just is like, I, Hard as I would want to say that he's an INFJ, I can't. I can't say it. I cannot say it. I, I want to, but I can't. He's he's an ISTP. He just is. Like, I can't. He keeps on talking about doing his own thing over and over and over. INFJs don't do that. They're affiliative. They want to be part of the team. They're very interdependent, right? So, like, he's not an INFJ. He just can't. 
Like that's, he keeps making these pragmatic statements. He's an SP, he's very concrete. I haven't heard a single what if statement this entire time. I want to, but no, not seeing it. Therefore, he's an ISTP for sure. So cool. Let's move to the next one. Very different ISTP than I've ever seen. I guess that just goes to show you, if you're gonna compare him between Brett Michaels, you know, Brett Michaels is an ESTJ focus. This guy is more of an ENFJ focus uh, ISTP. So keep that in mind, guys, that uh, cognitive focus is a difference between uh, different types. Cognitive focus basically is as a result of someone in their path to enlightenment, they're choosing which side of the mind to develop first over the, the other. So the cognitive focus is deviated more towards the subconscious instead of the shadow in this particular case. So not typical ISTP, ENFJ focus ISTP, but remember, cognitive focus towards your subconscious is a little bit different, guys. The reason why it's a little bit different is because uh, uh, in the first world culture, it's kind of harder to develop your subconscious and like reach happiness, etc. Mostly like the breakout stars get that or, you know, um, not that saying that people get rich overnight, but the people who do have a lot more privilege are more subconscious focused because they're able to uh, explore that side of the mind instead of our shadow. The shadow leads to wisdom. And it's kind of interesting that in our culture, we're actually more shadow focused as a culture than we are subconscious focused. And that's where that comes from. So, but uh, yeah. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next one here. Okay, and Harry Styles, delete. And then delete. Awesome. Okay. One second. I oh, got a special request from somebody on a special typing that was, uh, we might have time for that. Let's, let's find out. Um, NBA young boy, NBA young boy. All right. So 25, 25, Chester Bennington. All right. looks like NBA young boy is next. I have no idea who that even is. So forgive me for like having no clue. NBA, young boy. And let me update my notes. Harry Styles. Okay. if I like actually if I spell that correctly All right, I think that's about the same okay Young boy interview. Come on. Okay. Apparently there's no interview with this person. Come on. Let's try this and then I might, might be lucky. Top three things you need in the studio. Shit. What I need. <laughs> Skip that question. Okay. Craziest studio story, if you have one. Wow, this guy's like super hot. Next up, we got NBA Young Boy. 
Let's get it, nigga. Yeah. Bayo Flex X We finna hop up on it. Down the down the hill. Cause you Real shh. Even though it just started off. Like you know what I mean? Like you you a young rapper, you probably look at other niggas like, yo, you did this, I wanna Of course this. he like, Yeah. Not fun. Let's see. Oh, that's the producer. Okay. So. Yeah, you guys gonna get like, sir? Can anyone find like a good interview? Because. I see a lot of people opinion in, but like who's like actually talking to the guy. You know what I'm saying? Super chats are closed. Yes, they are closed. They're closed. Read the sign. It's closed. Thank you. Okay. Problem interview. Nope. I don't know how to play. You don't know how to play, so you just gonna be bench warming? Yep. <laughs> with a mouthful of um ice though. <laughs> yeah. Would you play with your ice if they called you in the game? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see yesterday that you only follow five people. Why do you only follow five people? I don't like to see a lot of internet stuff. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. You're very handsome in person. Do what, What's your favorite feature about yourself? You're handsome online as well, but like this is my first time seeing you. You want to let me take you on a date? Do you want to take me on a date? Yeah. You can take me on a date. How old are, how old are you? 22. Really? That wow. So, like, this guy is, like, literally asking her out on television. And the first question she asks is, how old are you? Or, or wait a minute, is it like, uh, uh, or, or is her next question, like, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, do you have a job? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's pretty direct if I ever seen one. Not only is that direct, that's concrete. Definitely interest-based. It's also pragmatic. The guy's a direct SP, which means he's uh, going to be like ESTP or ISTP. Let's be straight. Like, that's got to be. <laughs> Let's keep going. So how old are you? Are you really 22? I'm 18. I have a feeling we can go wherever we want to go, even with you being 18. For sure. Okay. All right. Well, I'll hold you to it. He's like, you? Man. I don't know how to play. You don't know how to play? So you're just going to be bench warming? Yep. <laughs> with a mouthful. With your ice if they called you in the game. Okay, they're doing that same one again. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll try that one. Uh, let's see. It's so hard to uh, type people that uh, change things up. Let's see here. Uh, she has a crazy studio story. Okay. Say here. Explains why he dropped out of high school. Go sneaker shopping. Is this like a show? Some sneaker shopping tonight. Gonna see what he's feeling, what he's not, and then hopefully he's gonna buy some. 
Yeah, I'm not. Really? Yeah. How important is it for you to keep them fresh? Mandatory. I don't, I don't like buying shoes or things, you know. I really like to match with them. I saw an Instagram, you and your son had. Gotta keep them fresh, folks. Gotta keep them fresh. So, like, definitely SE and I for sure. And uh, let's keep going. The matching red 11s? Yeah. With him, I do it a lot. You talking about Draco? His real name, Caden. He the oldest. Okay. It's and four of them. Does he like sneakers? Does, does one of them like sneakers more than the other or what? I think he likes shoes, but he's too young to know. Your grandmother raised you. Did she do her best to keep you in fresh sneakers or what was it like? I ain't never had all this shit. I ain't never had this shit. I just thought of, I just thought of getting uh, all this when I got money. Man, I don't know. I don't want to sell them, but I don't know. And now you're super popular. You can't just go to the mall and get them. Do you get mobbed at the mall when you go? Nope. I still go to the mall. That's how I know I ain't a star all the way yet, because I can still walk through the mall. Okay. So it's all good. <laughs> super pragmatic. I can still walk through the mall. It's all good, yeah. Gosh, seems pretty outcome focused, if you ask me. Seems pretty outcome, but uh, let's keep going. Put down a point for control so far, but uh, let's keep going. I heard you never out it two days ago or a pair of pants, but never. Really now, you travel, one outfit a day, and then you replace. Oh no, I had these on yesterday. Oh, so it's not true. Nah, don't do that, because it <laughs> is. OK. Yeah, it ain't, I don't know, ain't, it ain't no big deal, I guess. That is a big deal it's to not outfit repeat. You must go through a lot of clothes. I do. I got a lot of clothes, but I buy a lot of clothes too. Okay. So I don't know. I had these when I was younger. I think in like sixth grade. Really? Yeah. Man, it was crazy. I think this was my second pair of Jordans I ever had in my life. Really? Yeah, my brother gave them to me. My godmother bought them for him, and he just gave them to me. Three. Very S E and I there. Awesome. Probably make, I mean, it's all the whole money thing he's got going on. I could argue TE because, like, achievements and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, kind of seems it might be SFP and TJ Quadra. So, um, and, yeah, he's pretty uh, pretty cringe. Kind of like responding, though. Make more of an argument with ISTP. So, kind of seems like a little bit more Effie Inferior than Effie Child. So. Like they're sentimental to you a little bit? Yeah, because they used to hurt my feet, but it was the only pair of Jordans I had, so okay. I used to... Yeah, it used to hurt my feet, because, like, I'm concrete, you know? Uh, so, still still direct, etc. Keep speaking in terms of outcomes, though. Wow. Threes are really good, though. It sucks that they hurt your feet, because they're, like, one of the classics. Yeah, kiss. No, I'm working on my own brand. Okay, so independent. You're not looking to maybe sign with anyone. No. I want to talk about growing up. No, because I can't be controlled because like, you know, I'm pragmatic, you know, gotta, gotta do it, you know. Got an SP, got an SP, got an SP. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah. From a style perspective, who did you look up to? Oh, uh, Chief Keith. Chief Keith. Yeah, he ain't from Baton Rouge though. And what about now? Obviously, you're in the game. Is there anyone that you're a fan of? I ain't a fan of nobody. I ain't a fan of nobody. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Okay. Are you still in school? Nope. Dropped out? Yep, I'm chasing. I got a dream chase. What grade did you drop out at night? ISFP pretty hard. Probably could actually. So 
Oh, he is a walking Barity. Got a... Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, gratuitous money flush. Yeah, exactly. No. No, definitely, like, gonna have to do the FITE approach for sure. Uh, so... Seems... Let's see. It's hard to tell because, like... If he's like on drugs, you know, it's kind of hard to like really, really understand, you know, what it is. Because I could argue ISFP pretty hard. I mean, it's pretty obvious he's an SP, but uh, which SP? And honestly, right now I'm kind of leaning mostly towards ISFP. And some ISFPs can be tough acting, as Wonkavision points out. But uh, yeah, really seeing ISFP with this guy. Over you, that man, that nigga dropped his nest. That boy sprayed all in the car. <laughs> Say you wish it up, huh? <laughs> this bitch with the whole car, yeah. I'm gonna show you. What he, what he in there? He locked it up. Man, I need to hit that bitch with a bucket of paint, boy. Real talk. Bucket of paint. Yeah, definitely the gratuitous display of money and uh, status, etc. He loves that status, and I keep getting more of a responding uh, approach from him for sure on that. Definitely FIT SP. Be responding. The, the only option is ISFP, quite frankly, just through deductive reasoning. He only would have to be an ISFP. But then again, folks, you have to take this at an extreme grain of salt because at this point, like, don't exactly know, like, where his mind really is because, I mean, what if he's, like, perma-drugged all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, how is it really hard to get, like, to exactly completely pinpoint because he's, like, on a mind-altering substance at all times, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, okay, yeah, sure. I could be like, yo, he's ISFP, you know, but what if he's actually like an ENTJ ego all the time? He's just in his ISFP side like 24 seven because he's on stims, you know what I'm saying, right? Makes it a little hard, but yeah. So yeah. Yeah, don't, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a, uh, nice. Good call. Uh-huh, yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, it's in my wallet. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Railgun came in to find my wallet, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm going to lean ISFP with this one, guys. I mean, it's really hard. This guy is super hard to type anyway, so take it with a grain of salt, a major grain of salt. Uh, so NBA, young boy, uh, going for ISFP. I would have argued ESFP, but he's just not. He's just not. He's, he's, he's responding. He just has to be responding. So, yeah. So, cool. All right. Uh, yes, I did make romantic compatibility videos. They are season 14, episodes one through nine, and they're available on patreon.com forward slash csjoseph. If you get in on the silver tier, which is the first level, episode nine is available for silver tier, but the other episodes one through eight is available for gold tier and above. Thank you for the opportunity to preach a commercial before the audience <laughs> much appreciated so let's get down there okay delete on that one and then uh let's see here get that one there too harry styles harry styles nba young boy delete 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 okay harry styles harry styles okay coming up on the end of the show it's coming up on our two hour Limit so Soup John Stevens uh, was next. Oh, uh, okay, so so Soup John Stevens. Hmm. Yeah, okay, go for it. 
Okay, so um, John Stevens. I hope I said his name right. You know what I'm saying? I really like actually hope I said this guy's name correctly. Don't know if I did. So cool. Okay, Bryce Dresner. MTV interview, dishes on Celebrate Brooklyn. Uh, kind of a little bit difficult here. Hi, my, my name is Sufjan Stevens, and we're Sufjan. at Make Skateboards at I-20 Gallery in Chelsea. Uh, hi, I'm Scott Ogden, and uh, along with Jonathan Lova, we put this show together for the summer. It's a, a temporary pop-up skateboard shop. It's a group exhibition, and um, I guess it started, I grew up skateboarding, and I've always been just interested in art. And today we have Sufi on here to talk about Will Robertson, and yeah. I'm, of Odds, and Prospect Park. I'm here because uh, the gallery includes a lot of Royal Robertson's artwork, and I'm a huge fan of his. <laughs> We've been friends for a while, and you'd seen Royal's work at my house a long time ago, I believe. Yeah. And I've been in the process of a film called Make for like, off and on for 10 years, and I guess one of the artists is uh, Prophet Royal Robertson. And at a certain point, we got to editing and music, and I approached you to pop, you know, write a few tunes, some instrumental tracks, and I think through that process, you started getting introduced to Royal a little bit more. Yeah, I remember I came over when I was going to write these songs, I came over to your house to, to look at some of the work. Yeah. And you had like a lot of royals. His whole wall, all of his walls were covered with royals. Royal Robertson was a... Gosh, that's such a painful on tape to uh, what it was like, what your experience felt like up there on the stage tonight doing the show for the first time. It was very strange and very exciting and, you know, kind of a once in a lifetime experience because I've... I've never done a taping before, and um, and to do it in that that room, which is a room that has so much history, you know, and has so there's uh, just so much energy in there from all the people, and you could see everybody because it's it's a relatively small room, and uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting. That can be scary in some respects, being able to see everybody in every detail, but in other yeah. respects, it makes you really feel connected. Well, I like looking out in the crowd and seeing individual faces and seeing their kind of um, their responses, individual responses to everything. And some people, you know, are really excited and they're smiling and some people look really serious and they seem very thoughtful and like they're trying to pay attention. And mm, they seem very thoughtful and it's like they're trying to pay attention because I'm a TEFI user, also informative and responding and control because I'm very outcome focused, etc. Gotta gotta be all about that, you know what I'm saying? And uh... and it's kind of exciting to see kind of the diversity of people and the way that they respond to the music, and yet we're all kind of um, grouped together. You know, we create this one weird community in a room for a short. We create this one weird community in a room. We're all together in this regard. That's abstract. That's affiliative as well. Uh, doesn't seem to be very systematic. Um, so. Abstract, affiliative, informative, responding, control. So that would basically mean he's automatically an INFP, just by default, uh, an FITE for sure. But uh, let's let's keep going. For a period of time, and we're participating in this music, and you know that's a very unique, special thing. My music uses personal history because I think that's the most reliable starting place. Oh, my music uses personal history, which is introverted sensing, because I think that's the most reliable starting place, using uh, using that as reference points. So that's uh, very interesting. Oops. Um, well, he said that that could actually be construed as a systematic statement, um, but I am putting that down there as well. Uh, and um, and I, I, I think that I, I use a lot of techniques from fiction writing that I learned in school, which is to use your own life, you know, in your art, because that's um, use your own life place in your art that feels most real and most believable. That, and also that's the place that feels most real and most believable. That's also S-I-N-E, two S-I-N-E statements. That's also his believable statement. That's T-E as well. 
So definitely uh, STJ and FP Quadra for sure. And uh, definitely affiliative. He's not pragmatic at all. So STJ, NFP, Quadra, um, abstract, affiliative, like just based on that, he's an INFP. Like I can't do any more than that. Let's let's find let's find some additional uh, interviews just to verify. Let's see here. Uh, at dance rehearsal uh, with Sufjan Stevens for his upcoming show. I come from uh, to have a dance routine. I think uh, from Showgirls. <laughs> <laughs> How long has this uh, been in the works? Well, we've already we've already toured this show through the U.S. and Europe and elsewhere, and so we've probably done maybe six, 50 shows or sixty or more, maybe. Kind of an idea I had is to do dance, and so I, I uh, asked my friend Jess if she would uh, choreograph. Asked my friend Jess to see if she would. Uh choreograph because he's interdependent uh, as well and then uh, definitely uh, stating what he's getting out of the situation so it's more interest based and at first it was just going to be movement and then it just turned into all out aerobics so this is a just you're tweaking a few things and introducing a few new things for these shows we also kind of wanted to make it cooler and bigger and more exciting and also it's outdoors and it's a much bigger space it's in our hometown so we want it to look fantastic do you like to dance at parties and public functions in general as a kid i i i've always i was always very like nervous about my body and like this guy is literally a clone of frank james i mean you can just the cadence of his voice how he sounds and everything is like he's, he's frank james 2.0 like let's be straight guys this guy is literally Frank James. He, he's an INFP. There's just, there's no point in moving forward on this. So, INFP, there you go. Sufjan Stevens, INFP. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool. All right. Going to do another one. This Danny guy. Who's this Danny guy? Sufjan Stevens. Delete. Danny Duncan. Danny Duncan is next. All right. Super chats are closed, folks. Super chats are closed. Danny Duncan. Offensive interview, Frank. Danny Duncan interview. Okay. No jumper. All right, guys. Welcome to the OVNI interviews. We're your hosts, Eric Bork and Mikey Taylor. What up? We're the co God's Danny stretches skaters. Yes. I was like, oh, okay. So I did this thing called like active isolated stretching. And basically it was like massage, but it's not massage. It's stretching. So yeah. it's like, you know, supposed to help your like legs and everything better. And I feel like skaters are just like killing their bodies, but no one helps them. So yeah. I was like, fuck, I want to do this. And like a long time ago, I like wanted to do this and never did it. And then I saw Zion Wright's like Florida days part, hit him up on Instagram. And then he was like, yeah, I'm down to do that. And I'd like talk to his dad and stuff. And then that's who I started working with first. So we're right now we're like four stories up and downtown you were pretty close by here at one event. Tell us about that when right you came next door. out. Yeah, like I, uh, I was out here and like there was a Sixth and Mill had like Nike SB. I think it was. Uh, yeah, Nike Street used to League. have a private park right there, and they were happy. Yeah. Okay. So that's S E N I uh, direct movement, staying within the context of the conversation. Direct responding movement S E N I. Let's keep going. having some event right yeah and so like when i came out here i, I remember i literally had 32 dollars in like a ziploc bag like no joke no, no like money in my bank account because it was negative so i like, came out here with nothing and i remember going there with uh this guy justin williams and pragmatic definitely seems pragmatic i was like waiting in his car because he was like you know he knows people and he was like trying to get me into it and then i waited in his car for a while and he came out with like a wristband so he got me in and i was like 
worked on like Daryl Angel, I think, or like Trevor Colden, a bunch of random people. A guy from Plan B, I think his name was Ryan. Mm-hmm. And like they would, you know, like throw me some cash. <laughs> Ryan Sheckler or something. No, 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 <laughs> okay. no, not him. He was like a TM, like a TM. Okay. Maybe his name's not Ryan. Um, but yeah, so they would like throw me cash and yeah, I would just do that. And so, so you were doing stretching out. Did you ever throw me cash? So like, yeah, let's do that because I am interest based. And what if, because I am an SP type, I am an SP, definitely an SP looking like ISTP so far. Uh, but, uh, We'll see. I want to verify against TIFE and TEFI a little bit more. Ever work like for a facility or do people like pay you private? Yeah, I would just get tips. Like that's about it. And then uh, I got hired by a couple of people. And okay. Was it enough to like, like yeah. was that going to be your path, right? You're like, dude, I'm crushing it. Like, No, yeah, I definitely wasn't crushing it. So it was kind <laughs> of a shocker then. I, I worked with, a, I had like a lot of clients in Florida. So like where I got paid, you know, and I could, I could yeah. survive fine in Florida. It was like really easy. Like I made good money for where I was from in Inglewood. But coming out here, obviously, I had, I it was like an all new like totally. slate of people. So I was like building that up. Um, you mentioned though that there was something behind it. Like you want to help athletes out. Like there's kind of kind of some drive behind it. Yeah, I like love sports. Still love sports and love being involved. It was cool to like help people and like be a part of like, you know, kind of be a part of their success. If someone was like hurt an ankle or whatever, and then you help them get back up, you know? Yeah. Ooh, that is TIFE for sure, and uh, still concrete. Uh, pragmatic. All right, cool. Direct responding movement. He is an ISTP. There you guys go. Danny Duncan, ISTP. I can add that in here. Cool. Oh, people think he's an ESTP, huh? All right, I'll keep going. Yeah, and then, sure. so that I, I like that a lot. Have you, have, do you have a background in anything else other than skating, like football, basketball, anything like that? Or is it primarily skating? Yeah. And I, I just guys, no, I'm not seeing control at all. Like he's, he's movement. I mean, he had no plan whatsoever. Just, he just like flew by the seat of his pants and just randomly showed up and ESTP they're outcome focused. They're focused on like, what are they going to get out of the situation? Is it worth it for me to just take the risk? They're not just going to randomly take the risk with NI inferior. NI child would take the risk for that because they're movement oriented. NI child definitely do that. That's why this guy is NI child. This guy's an ISTP and that's it. Like, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to challenge that point anymore. So moving on to the next one. Let's see who's next. All right. It is Chester Bennington. We've got some Chester Bennington. L O L. Yeah. Good old. That's my warm Chester Bennington. Awesome. Always wanted to do Chester. Let's do some Chester, shall we? That would be fantastic. Yeah, I love her. So, this is this is not the most awkward thing I've ever done. <laughs> My initial impression of Chester Bennington is ENFP. Just throwing it out there. Sometimes I, I met someone who <laughs> like a little witch. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bunny. <laughs> I'm a little bunny because I got SE demon. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Formative. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> or like this, though. <laughs> He's a red-tailed fox. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for taking time. And uh, I mean, you're like the Beatles in Germany, in my eyes. <laughs> he has such a huge hype every year, <coughs> or every two years, you come over with a new album, especially in my peer group, I mean, they mm. grew up with your music now. How is it to be back in Berlin? And first of all, welcome back to Berlin. Thank you. Um, it's always great to be in Berlin. Like, I I absolutely love the city. I love Germany as a whole. I, I haven't found a piece of Germany that I don't like. <laughs> um, I've said this a million times, but uh, the first time I came to, to Germany, I was like, I got off the plane, I was like, The first time I came to Germany, I got off the plane. I got this because I'm an SI user, because I'm an SI user, because I'm an SI user, because I'm an SI user. As I'm going to talk about myself and my experiences over and over and over again for my long-term memory. I'm an SI user. I don't know why, but I kind of get it. I get it. I get like, I can't understand what that guy's saying, but I do. I can't, re I don't know what that thing I'm reading means, but I. I don't know what that thing I'm reading means. You know, I, I, I don't understand what that guy is saying, but I still understand because I'm abstract and more N-E, S-I-N-E, L-O-L kind of do it i felt like um on like a cellular level i was like oh i feel like really this feels really familiar to me and uh yeah so but wait but didn't you didn't you do a um the and but wait didn't you do this because like i'm actually know that i'm direct and like i'm gonna cut you off because i'm a ti user because i gotta verify everything you say because you know what you believe is not necessarily the truth because i'm a tife user because i'm max Shinoda. you know what i'm saying s3.com and you he checked his like heritage and you've got I'm like, like i'm a viking and a german i'm a german <laughs> viking he didn't even know i, I, I thought i was like english because it's like chester Charles Bennington sounds pretty freaking English to me. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in. Chester Charles Bennington sounds pretty freaking English to me because I'm a TE user. I'm actually known as a TIFE user for sure. And he's direct and probably affiliated, but who knows? English and something else. I'm like mostly Norwegian and then like almost just as much German. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So did you try to find your ancestors or is there anyone alive maybe? Um, you know, I don't really care, okay. honestly, like, you know, <laughs> I'm not the kind of person who's like, oh, I have all these relatives or all these, you know, it's like a, you've got like a, like a, like a, some Duke or some, you know, yeah. I don't well, know what's um, Barbara Bush, I am, I am related to Barbara Bush. I don't know. If I, I am related to Barbara Bush. Okay. That guy is so informed in shitting movement. It's like obvious, you know, like he's definitely a starter type. No need to go beyond that. Like definitely a starter type. Definitely S I N E T E F I. The only starter type that exists for that is E N F P. So, you know, just like, let's be honest, like that's it. But let's hear a little bit more. Let's get some Mike Shinoda in there, you know? If that's cool or not, but it's a fact. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. In which, what is your connection? Uh, she's, a, she's a cousin of my grandmother. Cool. Cousin of my yeah. grandmother. I mean, but that's exactly the reaction, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, cool. But I'm sure that I'm also like, a relative that's, a, that's exactly the reaction right because you know to like you know some dude who was like a maniac like murder about our japanese side and about our um like my doing the the ancestry.com or whatever there's so many of those like it's just i i feel like a lot of people that i know and maybe it's i don't know if it's an american thing or what because everybody's a just like everybody there is an immigrant so like we all like i my brother did it so i by default i did it you know what i mean and it's like we found out stuff about our japanese side and about our um like my dad's side and my mom's side you know cool stuff like like army generals and you know cowboys and stuff i actually do you know who jesse james is I found out where I'm related to Jesse James. See, that's dope. That's cool, right? Yeah, like, that was, we were, cool. but we were talking about that. That's the kind of thing he wants. He wants like some outlaw or some yeah, like, like, I got like, he wants some status because like, yeah. Interesting, like some like conservative yeah. lady. You yeah, it's not like, like, you don't want to be related to like, oh, he was the governor of Connecticut, of like, yeah, I don't yeah. know what, whatever. Delaware. Yeah. Woo. Not have that you, exciting. Have you ever met Barbara Bush and told her like, hey, we're no. family? No, and I bet if I was like, hey, you know what, I'm related to you, she'd be like, oh. 
you know what's funny about that you know why that's such a good birthday for chester is because this dude like gets up at like four in the fucking morning and like works out and comes to work and we work i mean it's like here and then you're doing stuff with the kids and picking people up and making dinner for like 20 people it's like you do so many things yep. in a day i he doesn't sleep as much as i do so I mean, you get to sleep. You sleep like six hours or five hours. Oh, six! If I sleep for six hours, I wake up like oh, I slept too long. Eh. Yeah. Five, so, yeah. So like that's that's part of it. But to like sit in bed and not do anything in a day is like really that's kind of crazy that you did that. It was rad. Yeah. Yeah. It says the introvert. You know, <laughs> like come on. Yeah, Mike should know his direct responding movement. Because I thought like maybe you did it like it's. Um... It's not really that big of a deal. In it, and she's like, "Cool, I'm gonna go." <laughs> this old guy. Forty-two weeks. <laughs> yeah, but it's all in your mind, right? Like that's actually that was one thing that we that I I told people when I came home from a sh uh, we we had a show a festival show here we played with some other artists who are older than we are. And so Mike Shinoda, T I F E, uh, direct responding movement, uh, and S E N I. So he's a Templar type. And so he's an ISTP or an INFJ. Very like. There was something about the show where I, I went like, I don't know if this artist would be as successful in the US. And I came home and I was telling people about it and they're like, well, why would, you know, why wouldn't they be? I said, because the US has like this obsession with like young, all their musicians being young. Um, and we were, you know, it's not just musicians too. It's like, you know, you age out of things in the US. And, and what I like about Germany you age out of things in the U.S. Wow, it's a very abstract statement. Okay, fair enough. And when I and this is true for other places, especially I think especially in Europe, um, that in fact I asked the promoter going back to the show thing. I asked the promoter, you know, so what's the story with this group? You know, what why? Tell me about the connection with the crowd and the group. And one of the things he said was like the group. The, crowd likes them because they are youthful like they're they're older guys but they like run around and jump around and they act young and they're having fun it's like you want to grow up to be youthful right and i went that is so cool that's something that we don't in the u.s they don't do they don't and i actually i feel like maybe that influenced us or influenced me a little bit like i don't you know i'm not dressing like a 15 year old but i don't want to not dressing like a 15 year old but yeah okay so Definitely, uh, Mike Shinoda is an INFJ. Definitely an INFJ. And we're gonna do one final, one final one. It is Chase's choice. And this is because I was asked to do it and I will do it because I was asked to do it. So folks, welcome to Post Malone. We're gonna do Post Malone. Oh yeah, cool. Thank you for coming back to see uh, see us. I, I I love hanging out with you. And uh, last time I saw you, I we went I would. to the Olive Garden. Yes, sir. And uh, <laughs> and we did our bit. It was really fun. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. I really did love uh, Olive Garden. I, I I've never been there, and I love the breadsticks. Okay, and uh, I can show you the, the the ways of the truth. Yeah, the ways thank of you. Justice. The ways of justice. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what the Olive Garden was. <laughs> and, uh, and ways of the truth and justice. Okay, interesting. Could stay initiating for Mr. Malone, but uh, we'll get that out. Um, because Post Malone is uh, such a polarizing person within this particular community, I will uh, do what I can in this uh, verification here. This is the final typing I'm doing tonight, folks. It's the final one. So good old Post Malone. So here we go. And then, uh, uh, then you're like, what are we doing now? And it was yeah. like probably 10, 30 or 11 o'clock. Yeah. And I go, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. And you go, no, come on, man. Yeah, that's, that's not the way we do it. And I go, yeah, yeah, I got to do it, man. Like, Grandpa's got to go home. You know? And you go, no, nah, come on, Jimothy, let's do it. And I go, Jimothy. And, uh, and then we went out yes, sir. to a place called uh, Patty Riley's, which yeah. is, yeah, and dude, it was great. We didn't tell them we were coming or anything. No, it was incredible. It was a good time. Dude, we shut the place down. We shut it down. We sang some Irish folk songs. and uh, We really did. Dude, you know a lot of Irish folk again. songs. It was fantastic. S-E and I for sure. Definitely S-E and I. Um, 
Yes. Sir, thank you very You're much. a talented individual. I learned uh, that from drinking Bud Light. Oh, no, that's not, no. Well, uh, as you're just sipping on a Bud Light right now. Um, <laughs> no, 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 water. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's water. Water. <laughs> uh, dude, last night you did the, uh, the, the Bud Light uh, dive bar tour? Yes, sir. Now, what is, what, what's the deal with that? Um, you know, I'm just, as everyone probably knows who knows me, I'm a, the biggest Bud Light advocate in the whole universe. You really are, and, besides uh, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my dad who just lived on Bud Light for years. And, um, as everyone knows, I'm the biggest Bud Light uh, advocate in the universe, so TEFI, fair enough. Talk about what everyone else knows. You know, we, we did one last year, and um, we came out this year and with Sublime as a band, and Fat Joe came out. And I can't was, believe that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Uh, how so, fun? So you're doing, like, different dive bars around the country? Or? Yeah, so I guess, you know, hopefully we'll get to do a third one if they still like me, and then... Um, you yeah, know, we can do. just run around and do, do shows, and I get to sing songs for people who want to hear them, and I think that's... This is a do-over, guys, and the show has actually already ended. I'm just adding in this one as a bonus because I was requested, and I'm honoring someone's request. That's all. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. It is cool. Uh, you, the third album, it's rumored that it's coming out. We don't know yes, when. It, is it close? Is it anywhere? It's completed. It's done. The third album's done. If anybody cares. It's done. Finish. Over. Done. You, you have Third album is done. If anyone cares, okay, he's direct. Okay, cool. So, SFP, NTJ, Quadra, he's very direct. No problem. Let's do another one. Goes undercover on... All right. What's going on, guys? This is Post Malone, and we're going undercover on the internet, and this is actually me. Twitter. Anymore? I guess I'm really thinking about Call of Duty, because all I do is really play Call of Duty nowadays. Posted that one. Oh, shit. Vibin' heavy with that. All right, that's pretty pragmatic, if I've ever seen that. And uh, definitely gonna, pretty movement, not gonna lie. Hashtag Rockstar Beat. Who produced it? Any on no? It was produced by a guy named Tank God. He's a young kid. I met him through Diddy's son, and we just kind of had a blast, and it just kind of happened naturally, and it was a lot of fun. Blast that! Yeah, that's like literally movement. So direct responding movement. S-E-N-I-T-I-F-E. Pragmatic. Okay. I stand by my original typing of Post Malone being an INTJ. There you go. Like, it's pretty obvious. He's an INTJ, guys. ESFP focused. So, anywho, gentlemen and ladies, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is fantastic. And uh, uh, thank you for being members of my audience. Uh, I know that I had skipped uh, the last uh, live stream, so that's why this one's a little bit longer. Uh, making up for that uh, lost time and uh, otherwise thank you all for the super chats it keeps the lights on and uh i'll uh, you guys have a happy thanksgiving I'm gonna be dropping another season 19 episode uh this week for patreon and i hope to be getting another uh lecture out uh, for the youtube channel as well so anyway folks it's uh been fun and